Like sometimes, sometimes we won't even work at all. We, 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 we are very idle, most of us. Uh, I'll draw much on the topic of dress. Why? Because as youth, but I'm happy today because I can see most of you here, you are like properly dressed. I wasn't expecting it because I heard rumors about, hey, you guys, you guys from the city center church, like the way you dress and something, people lie so much about you. Saka, and tender, you could have a child, and you can have a child. Mm. Why should we dress properly? And dress in a better zone, you know, it has perik because dressing is the an index to the heart. But since you don't know, in the kind of china matter, Janko dressing in a basari in a Jagawanda, on a pure profession, I was in that because of the way you are dressed. In this way, yeah, Saka, a pana papa, and why do not find a cupeca appropriately and it cannot stone or. Topeka zunu zunu zia. Kana kuchipisa, topeka zunu zunu tono rerao. Kana tichi yenda kubasa, topeka yembe zi kubasa. As you know, uh, and then we see sika nandikuwa na injini, haka peka suta chenda wabasa kwa ke kutishunike shifampase. Saka, kana kutindopeka uniforme kuchikoro nchu ya kuchechi kutishunike shifampase. Saka, ngati zi kudresa appropriately. And why sometimes tinopeka zunu ziri too tight. Pane zunu zino kompromisa yoti yedu jiri unnecessary. Shekuti tinopama doctors mari imwe yukuti taigu na kuhisha andisa jimwe zunu. Sika tengera wana beyi jimwe zunu zwa wangu wa chidani. Ne mari ya tunuzo yinti sa kunopua na chiremba. Nyaye tightnessi, e, then I wouldn't talk about it kuwa komana. But it tuko wana iye jimwe zwa komana waka wanda. Not here of course. Waka wanda wano peka jiri too tight. Rega hindi bate nyayi. Mundire gerere kana ndika fumu kaba tanisiku zonyayi. Marivane rize ni ya waka isira industry neche kunze kwe body edu. Waka yenga loosely. Kuitra kutiti adapte kuma temperature changes. E, Dae nandiri mkoma na kana murumenda ita ura otichichi no itika. Ku industry kana kukapisa stereki. Kana kutonora stereki. Paku expanda. Neku and it is also so can't happen Ka if we are tightly dressed, especially my jeans. I have machines actually they do not stretch enough to allow that constriction, construction, and expansion. It affects reproduction. The good most of us, and I'm so desperate. I need those grandchildren. Please don't shortchange me. Let's go and dress properly. The ladies as well. We dress to cover, not to expose. So please let us cover what needs to be covered. What is private should always remain private. It doesn't matter how much we have abused the private private. It still remains private. Please, let's cover. Ngati uh, uh, our brothers keep us. Let us not tempt them. Uh, the, spirit, the spirit of prophecy says, cannot invite a temptation. It will be very difficult to overcome it. Saka ngati rege, ikuta zana kuenda kudenga tambo ya kuke meeting tese. Ngati kave. Zika ita too tight wa skana kana kwa exposure. Too much, especially my extremities. Maoko ne makumbo ne kumwe kuno kuku. That's why it is safa ne ma period pains are still necessary. Sometimes we, oh, we don't need all those top pains, those strong drugs that we take. We can only cover our bodies in, even to, to allow proper circulation. Kanapaka ita even and proper dressing. Circulation in our own proper. Saka man conditions that no suffer no majinji ano pera. Eh, tunofano cover moyo ye do neru doru amari. Pita ano ngoti ye pakupeka kweduka. Ngati nyanyi kupeke za moyo ye do kutiite shakanaka. Tesanya ya kuzingirana ne shai fashion. 
neku show off unnecessarily pakawanda ngati peke yu nyoro wa mwari kuti rudo wa mwari ugare kumatiri tigo kwansa kuponeswa tese tisa tadzise vamwe nekuda kwekupeka kwati ninge takaita zvinovha gwanga zvivagwe vari dzivacho vacha zviona kumberi uko kusvika vanete ngati rege ikutaridza vanhu vese vese mwari vakuitira Hymn 139, as I, the Forester Sisters, singing. Hymn 139. I found a friend, oh, such a friend, he loved him as I knew him. He drew me with the cause of love, and thus he bound me to him and brought my heart still closely twined. Not can sever for I am his and he is mine forever and forever. I found a friend, oh, such a friend. He bled, he died to save me, and not alone, but his own self. He I have a friend so precious, so very dear to me. He loves me with such tender love, he loves so faithfully. I could not live apart from him, I love to feel him nigh. And so we dwell together, my Lord and I. I tell him all my sorrows, I tell him all my Tell him what I know He tells me what I ought to do He tells me how to try And so we walk together My Lord and I He knows that I am longing Some weary soul to win And so he bids me go And speak a loving word for him He bids me tell his wife love and why he came to die and so we work together my lord and i 
In the land of fatless day lies the city for square. It shall never pass away, for there is no night them. God shall wipe away your tears. There's no death, no pain, no fear. And they count no time but yes, for there is no night there. All oh, the gates of Palamon. City for swim, all the streets with gold lay, and there is no night there. God to wipe away your tears, there's no death, no pain, no fear, and they can't, no time but yes, for there is no night. close to the city for square there lies crystal river flows and there is no night there God to wipe away your tears there's no death no pain no fear and they can't no time but yet sunshine bright in the city for square for the lamp is all the light and there is no night there God to wipe away your tears there's no death no pain no fear and they can't no time but yet there is no God to wipe away your tears there is no death no pain no fear and they can't no time but yes for there is no night there in 40 when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey. to trust and obey not a shadow can rise not a cloud in the skies but a smile quickly drives it away not a dot no effy not a Trust and obey.
hard to trust then then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way what he says we will do where he stands we will go never fear only trust then trust and obey for there's no to trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey hymns 63 Christ in song, hymn 63. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Wakati 
Kasika na musachke kufamba na chesu. Do we not have ladies in here? Vaskana. Can we do the actions? Thank you. Vasika na musachke. in the afternoon. We'll be collecting them today after the service. And may city center youth and ambassadors please remain after the service. We'll stand for our first song. Seventy-six, rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We pour the eating wine, lift up the fallen, tell them to Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing. Jesus. 
pray. Our Heavenly Father, those in heaven, I want to thank you for this day that you gave us and protecting us throughout the day. As we begin our service this evening, speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll give this time to our pastor. Good evening, everyone. How are you? How was your day? All right. Um, we are in the New Testament, and I will request you to be upstanding as we run through the text together. The book is Acts. What book did I say? Come on, I can't hear you. What book did I say? The book is Acts, and we are chilling in the New Testament. We are in the New Testament. All right? Acts, the first chapter, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. If you found it, can you say amen? Now I'm using the New King James Version of the Bible, and the Bible has got this to say. But you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. In the next few minutes, I want to teach and preach using the subject, power failure. Power failure. Shall we pray? Lord, this is your space. This is your moment, and this is your word. Please, I beg you that you show up. In Christ's name I plead. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. I solicit for your prayers even as I begin to run through the text. Ladies and gentlemen, it would be possible to claim that the book of Acts is one of the most critical and fundamental books in the entire New Testament. Why? Because without the book of Acts, we would know nothing about the early history of the Christian church. Without the book of Acts, we would know nothing about the origins and the early development as of Christianity. Without the book of Acts, the first days of the Christian church would be wrapped in utter darkness and oblivion. Friends, the book of Acts was written by a guy called Luke. The Bible calls him a physician. He was a highly learned scholar. As a matter of fact, Dr. Luke is the only non-Jewish writer or contributor of the New Testament. You will discover that other writers of the New Testament were all Jews. Dr. Luke also wrote the Gospel of Luke. Now check this out. He authored the Gospel of Luke and he also wrote the book of Acts. Now, when you look at the book of Acts critically, you will discover that the book of Acts is linked to the Gospel of Luke. As a matter of fact, the book of Acts is just a continuation of the Gospel of Luke. In other words, where Dr. Luke ended writing in the Gospel of Luke, he continues with the book of Acts. So there you have it. Volume 1, Gospel of Luke. Volume 2, Book of Acts. Same author. Now check this out. Dr. Luke in the Gospel records what Jesus began to do through his life, death, and resurrection. But Luke in the book of Acts, records what Jesus continued to do in his risen power through his followers. 
If I'm to summarize the entire book of Acts, here is the sentence. The book of Acts records the history of the power and energy of a risen Christ in action through his followers. Acts chapter 1, after the resurrection of Jesus, for over 40 days, Jesus appeared and mingled with the disciples. During this time, he is teaching them issues and matters concerning the kingdom of the Father. It was during this particular juncture in Acts chapter 1 where Jesus commands the disciples to dare not leave Jerusalem at Ocos. He tells them, whatever you do, do not leave the perimeters, the vicinity of Jerusalem. In other words, remain in Jerusalem. Wait for the promise of the Father. You see, friends, they were supposed to wait for the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so when you jump to verse 5, Acts chapter 1, Jesus opens up a discourse. On the Holy Spirit. Are you with me church? By explaining the baptism by John the baptizer. He tells them you were baptized by John with water. But in a few days from today you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As he continues with his discourse on the importance of them receiving the Holy Spirit. Verse 6 is problematic. <laughs> Stay with me church. I'm saying Verse 6 is problematic. Why? Because in verse 6, there is an interruption by a political question. Are you with me, church? He is telling them that they need to receive the Holy Spirit. Then there is there's some kind of interjection. There's some kind of interruption. And what interrupts Jesus is a political question. Check this out, friends. The disciples and most of the Jews, they had a distorted and twisted theology concerning the mission of the Messiah when he comes to this planet. They believed that when the Messiah comes, when the world redeemer comes, he is coming to overthrow and usurp the Roman government and re-establish the kingdom and the nation of Israel, hence establishing a physical messianic kingdom. In other words, the disciples in verse 6 are saying, is this the time you shall make the nation of Israel great again? Listen to me. The disciples were more concerned about the political redemption of Israel. They were more focused on the restoration of Israel's political power. What an irrelevant question. At a relevant and a critical time like this one. Watch this. In verse 7, Jesus reads their minds. He knows where they are going. So in verse 7, Jesus quickly draws their attention from their vain question about political power to a peculiar kind of power they were supposed to be focusing their energies on. And so in verse 8, woo, he says, but you shall receive power. Not the power you are asking me about, but there is another power. Now, you see, my friends, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, mm -hmm, constitutes of the last known words of Jesus during his earthly ministry. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, consists of the farewell words, the final words from Jesus to wrap up his earthly ministry. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, watch this, is the key that unlocks the door of the book of Acts and the gates of Christian history. Listen to me church. Allow me now to <laughs> zoom in microscopically and see what we can dissect in verse 8. The Bible says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and guess what? Unto the ends of the earth. Now, 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 right from first value analysis, mm -hmm, it's clear that power 
shall come when the Holy Spirit comes. Amen? Right from face value analysis, it's clear that power shall descend when the Holy Ghost descends. Right from first value analysis, it's plainly clear that power shall manifest when the Holy Ghost manifests. Therefore, Holy Ghost is synonymous to power because it's the coming of the Holy Spirit that ushers in a domain and era of power. Now check with me. Check, check this out. Check this out. Here is the most exciting part. You see, the Bible says you shall receive power. Now, 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 now. Power is a generic word. <laughs> Stay with me, church. I'm saying power. If you say power, what kind of power are you talking about? It could be physical power. It could be financial power. It could be a, 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 a physical power. What kind of power is the Bible addressing tonight? You see, friend, when you look at this word from the original language, now the original language of the New Testament is Koine Greek. That's the original Bible. The word which is translated as power in verse 8 is the word dunamis. Dunamis. Can you say dunamis? Now, 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 now. Dunamis comes the English word dynamite. Beloved friends, he's saying you shall receive dunamis when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Check this out. What is dunamis? Well, I'm glad you asked. Dunamis is a force emanating from God. Dunamis is supernatural efficiency and ability. Dunamis is miraculous power. In other words, Christ is saying this is the kind of power that shall come upon you when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. It's not mere and ordinary power, but it's that marvelous, stupendous, mind-blowing, miraculous, heaven-originated kind of power. Friends, some of us here have been to the fountain of Jordan for baptism, but we have never been to the fountain of Calvary for the cleansing of sin and regeneration of character. In case you are sleeping tonight, I am addressing the daily baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the daily baptism of the Holy Spirit is the daily baptism of power. Friends, let me teach you something this evening. The church has many needs. Amen? The church of God has many needs. But guess what? The greatest need of them all is the need for the Holy Spirit. Someone is sleeping, so I'm going to say it again. I'm saying the church of God has got numerous needs tonight. But the greatest need of this church is the need for the Holy Spirit. By the way, let me bust your bubbles a little bit further. A church is not a building. A church is not infrastructure. A church is not mortar and bricks. A church is not architecture. A church is a group of people that have been called out from darkness into this marvelous light and have come together in the name of Jesus with a common cause. In other words, you are the church. I am the church. And I'm here to say that the number one problem of the church of God tonight is lack of the Holy Spirit. Friends, listen to me carefully. The reason, what have I said? Come on, holla back at me. What have I said? The reason why some of our churches are so lifeless and powerless is because we have learned how to do church without the Holy Spirit. We have learned how to do church administration without the Holy Spirit. We have learned how to run church elections without the Holy Spirit. We have learned how to run God's work, God's business, God's agenda without the Holy Spirit. Beloved, sadly, catastrophically, somehow, the church has learned how to function and operate without the Holy Spirit. Now listen to me, church. In the last days, 
<laughs> we need to be careful. Are we together, church? I said, in the last days, we need to be careful. Not to confuse natural gifts or talents used or employed in the service of God for the actual working of the Holy Spirit. Mm, I'm coming down your lane right now. I am saying, be careful not to confuse talents used in the service of God for the actual working of the Holy Spirit. What do you mean, preacher? Why? Because it's possible to be naturally gifted and talented at executing the work of God and yet you are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's possible to be a talented church musician and yet you are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's possible to be a gifted elder or leader of the church, respected and worshipped, yet you are devoid of the Holy Spirit. Church, listen to me. It is not what is done for God that counts, but rather what is done by Him. The work of His Spirit through our surrendered wills. Sadly, unfortunately, friends, stay with me tonight. Sadly, most believers are known for talent and intellect rather than spiritual power. And what's worse is that we are okay and comfortable with the status quo. Let me teach you something. Service rendered to God in the energy and zeal of the flesh is a fruitless service. I'm going to say it again. I am saying that service rendered to God in the energy and zeal of the flesh is a fruitless service. Beloved, it is futile for us to serve God without the power of the Holy Spirit. Actually, it's the hardest thing that you can ever do. You're going to run yourself down doing God's work without the power of the owner of the work accompanying your service and your commitment in the house of God. Friends, powerless Christians, what have I said? Come on, talk to me. What have I said? Powerless Christians misrepresent the character of God. All seems well on the outside, but the saints are lacking power. All seems flashy, fly, and dope on the outside, but the saints are lacking power. All seems Adventist on the outside, but the challenge is the saints are lacking inward power. Now, now, let me pass a sweeping statement. Hello, are we together? Let me pass a sweeping statement. Check this out. Having the Holy Spirit inside us is better than having Jesus besides us. Oops. Before you shoot me, let me justify. John chapter 16 verse 7. John chapter 16 verse 7. The Bible says, but verily I tell you, these are the words of Christ. I tell you, it is for your good. It is to your advantage that I am going away. Why? Unless I go away, the advocate, the comforter, the Holy Ghost will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. In other words, in this text, Jesus emphasizes the Holy Spirit over himself. Hello? Are we together? Jesus seems to indicate that the Holy Spirit inside of you is better than Jesus besides you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit and Jesus are still one and the same thing. You see, friends, Jesus will work in us. Jesus will operate in us. Jesus will flow in us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's why... Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. This verse vividly and clearly represents the passing on of the baton. You know what a baton is? Between Jesus and the Holy Spirit regarding the divine mission on earth. 
Friends, we need to be obsessed and possessed by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, not every weekend. Friends, the text says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now check this out. <laughs> I love this man. Check this out. He is saying, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, other versions say, you will receive power. Are we together? New King James Version says, you shall receive power. Other versions say, you will receive power. Now, when I read this verse in the original Bible, According to the original language, this is what it reads. It doesn't say you shall receive power. It says you must receive power. In other words, this text in the original language carries with it an imperative tense. It says you must receive power. There's no two options about it. The question is you shall receive power. You must receive power. The dunamis power for what? What for? Well, it's in the text. It says when power comes, what will happen? You shall be my witnesses. Can someone say amen? Friends, are we together? I'm saying power for what? It's right in the text. When power comes, what will happen? You will be the carriers of the gospel. Amen? You shall take it everywhere. In other words, the dunamis power is for transporting, is for carrying off, is for transmitting the gospel. Why? The fearful disciples needed power for witnessing. These guys were former fishermen. They were timid by nature. So they needed some divine reinforcement. They needed holy boldness for preaching the gospel. They needed power to preach the gospel. They needed power to evangelize. Guess what? We are in the 21st century. We too need this dunamis power. Why? To emphatically proclaim God's word with love and conviction. Someone said, inspired preaching is the fire in the pulpit that melts the ice in the pews. Sin's greatest enemy is inspired preaching. Unfortunately, <laughs> there seem to be no power in some of our pulpits today. We got weak pulpits in some of our churches tonight with clowns entertaining the pews. We got power failure. Power failure in the pulpit induces paralysis in the pews. We are in trouble. Actually, I've discovered some pulpits today have become a platform for perpetual jokes and jesting. Stories that have got nothing to do with nothing. Philosophical trash and verbal garbage. Power failure. Some pulpits have become a place where people settle scores with each other. What's the problem? Power failure. Consequently, we got dead preachers preaching dead sermons to a dead congregation that is trying to reach out to a dead society. Friends, I've discovered this. That strong spiritual churches, strong Spiritual churches are not gathered around weak pulpits. Listen to me, church. When we rely on organization, we get what organization can do. When we rely upon education, we get what education can do. When we rely on eloquence, we get what eloquence can do. But when we rely on the Holy Spirit, we get what God can do. Friends, the text is clear tonight. The disciples, 120, went to Jerusalem. According to the command, according to what was expected, they waited in Jerusalem. They were in the upper room. They were having church. They had an upper room encounter and experience waiting for the Holy Spirit. Let me add a disclaimer. It was not an idle wait. 
it was a prayerful wait. By the way, one of the true marks of genuine revival is when God's people start praying with desperation for power to reach lost souls for the kingdom of God. And so when the day of Pentecost finally came, the Holy Ghost power manifested on the disciples. And guess what? Miracles were wrought in the name of Jesus. Now check this out. Before Pentecost, what have I said? I can't hear you. What did I say? The disciples found it hard to do easy things. After Pentecost, they found it easy to do hard things. I believe with my heart tonight that the same power that began Christianity on the day of Pentecost is the same power required to sustain it. I will say it again. I'm saying that the same power that manifested on the day of Pentecostal, initializing a Christian era, initializing a Christian domain, initializing Christianity, I believe that it's the same power required to sustain Christianity. That power was never exhausted nor depleted. It's still available tonight. You know what? We need a dosage of that power. Come on, talk to me, church. We need a dosage of that power. Why? Because we need to be obsessed and possessed by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. In the words of A.W. Tozer, A.W. Tozer, he says, and I quote, I do not believe in a repetition of Pentecost but I do believe in a perpetuation of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost is concentrated power. As I take my seat, let me show you the embodiment. Let me show you the prototype of power-inspired churches. By the way, we need power-inspired churches. Let me show you how they look like. Power-inspired churches are praying and fasting churches, seeking God's will and guidance. Power-inspired churches manifest a sense of unity brought by the Spirit even in times of difficulty. Power-inspired churches are generous churches whose members seek to meet the needs of others in the church. Power-inspired churches exhibit spirit-enabled boldness not to do witnessing, but to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Power-inspired churches are composed of members who continuously recognize their desperate need for the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Power-inspired churches are not eager to make a name for themselves, but to exalt and glorify the name above all other names, the name of Jesus. Power-inspired churches are not political, but they are spiritually charged and motivated. Power-inspired churches are radical, but not fanatical, depending on God's spirit. Power-inspired churches are filled with supernatural joy. Friends, stay with me. Talent, training, and experience are beautiful things. Talent, training, and experience are important, and they've got their own place in the work of God. But they cannot take the place of the power of the Spirit. Someone is saying, Pastor, you've been talking about this power. You've been talking about the Holy Spirit. How do I get the Holy Spirit? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Holy Spirit simply comes by asking. And I got proof. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Luke 11, verse 13. The Bible says, if you then, come on, talk to me somebody here. If you then, <laughs> though you are evil, if you who are wired 
in a cesspool of sin and corruption. If you, whose DNA strands are contaminated by sin, if you, who does not struggle to sin, if you, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, mm, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? There is the evidence right there in the text. Friends, the Holy Ghost, the power comes by asking. And I dare submit tonight that just ask. What have I said? Just ask and keep on asking for the Holy Spirit. Not every weekend, not once every camp meeting, not once a year. Ask for the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Friends, <laughs> The Holy Spirit is the indispensable factor for every believer. Mm, stay with me, church. I'm taking you somewhere. I said the Holy Ghost is the indispensable necessity for every believer. You see, this is what touches me. Check this out. The early church, whew, the early church, the prototype church, the model church, knew less about the Holy Spirit than most of us in the church today. Yet they experienced the Holy Spirit much more powerfully than we do today. Testimony to the churches, volume 5, page 158, and I quote. It says, we should pray. We should do what? We should pray as earnestly for the descent of the Holy Spirit. As the disciples prayed on the day of Pentecost. Watch this. She concludes by saying, if they needed it at that time, we need it more today. Friends, there can be no revival. Let me say it again. There can be no revival in the church. We will never see rivers of revival flowing in the church without an obsession with the Holy Spirit. Impossible. All revivals emanate with the power of the Holy Spirit. Actually, <laughs> Christianity without the Holy Spirit is a corpse. Remember this as I take my seat. Bethlehem was God with us. Calvary was God for us. Pentecost is God in us. Yeah. Beloved friends, this mighty God that stood on the edge of nothing and spoke everything else into existence, this God who's got no beginning and no end, this God who's got no predecessor or successor, this God who never takes a vacation, this God who is in control of the universe and millions of stars and galaxies out there, this God wants to make your heart his residence. In case someone has forgotten, let me remind you that our God is still seated high on the throne. How do I know? Ask Adam. He will tell you he is the seed of the woman that shall bruise the serpent's head. Ask Abraham. He will tell you he's Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace. Maybe you are doubting. Ask Jacob. He will tell you he is Shiloh of the tribe of Judah. Ask Isaiah. He will declare he is Emmanuel. Wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. Ask Jeremiah, he will tell you he is the branch of David, the Lord, our righteousness. Ask your boy, Daniel, he will tell you he is the Messiah. Ask Hosea, he will tell you he is the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. Walk with me in the pages of the New Testament and ask a guy by the banks of River Jordan, in the name of John the Baptizer, he will tell you that he is the Lamb of God that takes the sins of the world away. Jump with me 
in the Aegean Sea on the rocky island of Patmos and ask John the Revelator. He will tell you he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And you can ask me, I'll tell you that he is my body. He is my rock. He is my shelter. He is a well when I'm thirsty. He is food when I am hungry. He is my deliverer. He is my rock. He is the shelter in a time of storm. We're going to enter into a season of prayer. Um, and as some have given, and some are yet to give our thanksgiving offering, um, the Lord has kept us. Some may not be able to give the thanksgiving, but we are here still now. And we still need to thank the Lord for that. I'm going to ask the chorister to come and sing out. As 